boom. A Super Bowl, well, I guess that's a bracelet for me. <laughs> it's a Super Bowl. We got a special guest on today. Uh, O'Brien from Seattle Seahawks and from the uh, uh, Cardinals is on today. I'm excited. We'll be right back. That thing, it weighs like seven pounds. No, it's heavy. No, that thing is the real <laughs> deal. Heavy. Super it's Bowl. Heavy. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up, where we wake up. And uh, Pastor Scott? O'Brien Schofield. From, I mean, I'm just excited to be on the show yes. with you today. And, and uh, uh, we've had a chance to meet over the last month a couple times. And uh, you were in the office. I'm like, hey, yes. next Tuesday. Yes. I'm excited to be here. I uh, Absolutely haven't been in the media for a very long time since I retired, so it's a great opportunity to be a part of the show. Oh yeah. my God, and, and uh, it's going to be a, a, a powerful show. we got a scripture for your day, pray over your day, and thank you all for making us the number one YouTube uh, daily Bible study that is out there. Make sure that right now you hit like, and uh, you know, the two of you out there that hit dislike, get it right now. Get it out of the way, hit <laughs> dislike, just do it. Just hit it. And, uh, you know... It, to play in the NFL, they say, is the highest level. Yes. You, you, you perform. It's not like most of us, like, we can have a day where we go to the office, like, yeah, I'm just yes. going to take a break. Like, you practice to everything is 110%. I mean, yes. it's just everything. And to perform at that level when there's so many people trying to get in the NFL and yes. so few positions. And it's exciting. And, and today we're going to kind of talk about one of the things that you started doing back in college. Yes. Because there is a lot, you know, a lot of people, they get to that college level, they're playing at that level. Yes. But then to get to the next level, they say, is like like winning the lottery, in yes. a sense. It's yes. so hard to get the level. And so um, t- just tell me what you did. Okay. So I have some goals here. Uh and this is part of my football goals, but I used it over in my life, how, how I live my life. And my wife was able to recreate this for me once I got to the NFL. And basically it says success is a result of attitude and habits. Success consists of doing the common things uncommonly well. Consistency is the true measure of greatness. You are only doing your best when you're improving in what you're doing. And those things are something that kept me to the point where I wasn't focused on anyone else that I was competing against. I was always competing against myself. How great can I be? How consistent can I be? And that's how I measure myself. And that's how I carried my life. And I love that you you, you wrote them down. Yes. You wrote them down. And it's, it's so simple, yet few people actually do it. Yes. And um, it's something that I also did. I, w- I went through a big thing in, in 91. It was like, Boom, I hit rock bottom, and I'd been in college three and a half years, and I had 18 PE credits at the time. Wow. So, yeah, I was really rocking it. <laughs> <laughs> volleyball. Well, I had to take volleyball because that's where the women were, and so I always I got that volleyball <laughs> class every time I was in it. And, um, and I, I was like, I'm going nowhere. And I did the same thing. I, I felt like God just was speaking to me. And so I did, I just found all these super cool quotes and I put them in my room and I put them in the bathroom. When I woke up in the morning, it's the first thing I saw. I had them in my car and I had a little sheet that I printed up in my, in my wallet. Yes. And it was like what Paul was saying that we have to sometimes, we got to stir it up. Yes. Right? And that's what you were doing. Yes. Every day we just stir it up. We get ourselves reinvigorated that today is the day I'm going to give 110%. So our, our scripture today is, of course, Habakkuk, uh, Habakkuk. Yeah, you can say that. <laughs> ah, sorry. Habakkuk. Uh, two, two. Uh, write the vision, make it plain on tablets. And he was talking about the iPads back then. Yes. The, ta- the iPad the, the tablets. The old school iPads. <laughs> Chisel it in. <laughs> that he may run who reads it. And that last part, a lot of times uh, pastors don't talk about that last part. He ru- Because when I read it, I feel like running towards success. Yes. Right? Yes. So tell me, like, what, did, what was your, like, you got up in the morning and you're like, wow. Yes. Well, I mean, I had it everywhere in my locker, Same in my thing. car. Uh, this was the front of my folder. Uh, it was just so important to me that I knew, just like you said, the scripture says, write the vision, make it plain. But also a man without a vision shall perish. Oh, that's so, so good. It's like if I wanted to live and, and, and really feel alive, it's like I had to have a vision of where I was going. Right. And that was able to keep me on path no matter what I was going through. I was able to get back in line and, and know what I'm working towards. So it was easy to eliminate distractions. It was easy to make sacrifices because uh-huh. if it didn't equal up to what the vision was, 
there was no part of it in my life. And another, um, in, the, in the scripture you just referred to, it's one of my favorites, where there is no fission, people perish or dreams perish. And another translation, when I looked it up, also means that where there is vision, there's boundaries. Yes. So that's what vision does. Vision gives us boundaries. Like, and so you said that. You're like, it kind of kept me on the road. It keeps me on the path. Yes. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I'd like to just take a break. You know, just relax today. You're like, wait a second. God, I've got some big things that i got to do. i got to yes. accomplish. i got to give my best today. And it helps keep you on that path of greatness. And... It also helps you at great times because the Bible is very clear that we're going to have some setbacks. Yes. And you had, we were talking about before, you had a pretty like major setback yes. right before uh, the NFL draft. Yes, yes. So yes. T- tell them all that. Cause okay, so uh, I was projected to go pretty high in the NFL draft, uh, great <laughs> stats, and I went to the All-Star game. And then when I did that... Uh, blew my knee out the first practice, and that's usually a career-ending thing career for ending. your position. Like yes. it's like you're done. And and that time, uh, 2010 ACLs were still looked at like uh, whoa. No, you know? I know. So the word was I wouldn't get opportunity, or I'd probably be a free agent, wouldn't get drafted, and my faith was challenged. You know, for me because I was like, Lord, I made it all the way. Like I've been through so much just to get to this point, <laughs> right. and it's like right there. So it's what like, did you do? Well. I eliminated the distractions. I eliminated people in my life that doubted, that put doubt in my mind because I had to, I had to see the vision. And it was, it was really serious. It was nights where I was great around everybody, but when I get home, I cry like a baby. Oh, because it hurt. yeah, it did. You know, it hurt, but I had to realize that faith without works is dead. So right. I had to put action to what I was believing in. So I knew I couldn't work out. I knew I couldn't train and test for them. So I had to show them my personality. I had to show them my IQ the intangible things that I would bring to the locker room and to an organization. And those are the things that I banked on. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and you did. And so at bottom, because you said something in there that I really like, you eliminated the negative people in, in your life in a sense. Yes. And we'll have that. So we'll talk about that next yes. time. But on this one, you and I kind of lived this the same. I mean, I say the same thing. You lived at a, at, a, at a higher level. But the change in my direction was also I hit bottom. I turned to the Word of God. I got some stuff in front of me yes. that I, I just quoted. I just, I spoke it. I said it. And it's so important. Paul says, forget those things that are behind and press forward. So you had to go, okay, I had an ACL thing. That's yes. behind me. Yes. Now, what's ahead of me? Because yes. a lot of people get stuck on, well, my ACL and my limitations. But out there, um, people need to know that we serve a limitless God. And so then when we hit that limit... We turn to the God that'll take us past the limit. Yes. Amen? Yes, amen. And so, do um, you have any final words of anything that, like, maybe young young adults, what, what, what would you give them a secret that you would say, hey, this is one of the key things of uh, living life at a highly successful level? Well, uh, Jesus says you only need faith of the mustard seed. That's and good. it's like, don't think you need this radical faith to see a move of God in your life. It's just believing in what you want them to do. And put all your efforts and intent in action to what you believe that he's going to do for you. I love it. And this hurts my soul to talk about this. So just so you all know, this is going to break me a little bit. It's Green Bay Packers. My Packers <laughs> are playing the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> and they're in the, I believe it was the championship game. Yeah, or the NFC perform- championship the game. NFC championship game. My Packers, I was sitting back and I was like, God is a good God. We were up by 20 some points. <laughs> I mean, it was just like, I was like, yeah, all right. And, but you said something because we were talking about it. And because you were in the game yes. where it was one of the greatest comebacks in NFL history. Oh, yes. it, it literally was like, it, it, on my side, it was one of the most hurtful things. In my life. Yes. <laughs> but you said, what did you guys have on the field? What, what, what was Faith. It? Faith. That hit me hard. You, had, <laughs> you said that even though your quarterback was playing a horrid game, yes. he had thrown five interceptions. Yes. Did you guys doubt? We didn't doubt one bit. We all looked at each other and we knew that. It was just going to happen, you know, and this is the craziest thing because it was unspoken. Right. You know, you could just look at everyone and they knew it was like still time on the clock. There's still you know, time on the clock. Still time on the clock. Oh, that's oh, it gave me chills. And you know what? As you're watching out there, there's still time on the clock. 
There's still time on your clock. And I don't know how many interceptions you feel like you've, hit, you've thrown and how many fumbles you've had and how it seems like you're down and it's impossible. But faith will move the mountain in your life. It'll get you over the hump. Maybe you just went through a divorce. Maybe you went through a bankruptcy. Maybe you went through a major setback. Maybe you have some problems with, with a teenage child or, or a child that's a grown child or whatever it is. But we serve a God of impossible. We serve a God that parts the Red Sea, the Jericho and Goliath type God. And so wherever you're at, there's time on the clock. That, yes. That's a great, I'll do okay. a whole series called There's Time <laughs> on the Clock. Because in the end, we win. We do. In the end, we win. Unless you're Green Bay Packers, then you didn't win. Let's pray over your day. Dear Father, Lord, we thank you and praise you for everyone that's watching, that there is time on the clock. That, Lord, you've got some great things ahead of them, Lord. It doesn't matter how many times that we've fallen, but as the Bible says, I will arise. If I fell, I'll rise again. If I fell, I'll rise again. I keep rising up to the top. I keep going higher and higher. And I had a setback, and that's all right. God's just using it to be a setup in my life, taking me to that next level. We're going to write down the vision. Write down what we want in life and make it plain. And then we're going to run towards success. In Jesus' name, Jesus amen. Name. amen. Watch this clip. What I see in the Word so many times is, 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 is so, something so simple. It's just wanting it. We got to want it. It was a woman that was bleeding for 12 years in the Bible. She tried every doctor. She spent all her money. And nothing was working. And she was discouraged and hopeless and disappointed. But... Jesus came through town, great crowd around him, and she saw Jesus and she thought to herself, if I can touch that man, I'll be healed. So she pressed through the crowd. She grabbed Jesus. The Bible said that Jesus turned around and said, who touched me? The disciples are like, you're crazy, man. Everybody's around you. What are you talking about? Somebody touch you. Everybody's touching you. I touch you. No, no, no. Power had gone out for him. Say power. Oh, there's power in here this morning. Why? Because the healers heal here and he's full of power and he releases his healing power that his word might have that ability to penetrate and push out the sickness in your life, that you might receive and conceive the word of God, that it might become real in your body, that invisible word made manifest in creation itself. It's the intention. It's the word becoming flesh. Where to go? Who, who, who touched me? Power went out somewhere. And they brought her. You know, she, she fell at his feet. I'm sorry. I'm the one who touched you. He wasn't mad at her. He commended her. I'm not mad. Are you kidding? I wish everybody would do this. He said, your faith has healed you. Now go and be whole. What is this? What is this power? Think about it for a moment. So many people were there that day that probably needed a healing. But they were there just to get a glimpse that day of Jesus. I think sometimes in churches across America, people go to church in the morning, and I think that's a wonderful, commendable thing. I commend you. I honor you. Anybody who gets up on a Sunday on their day off and goes to church, my Lord, and then takes a shower to boot? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you're incredible. You're not binging Netflix. You're here at God's house. That's amazing. And that crowd turned out that day to get a glimpse of Jesus. I think that there's people all over America that have come to church today to get a glimpse of Jesus, to worship him a little bit, to hear a couple words that he says, oh, there's Jesus. I saw Jesus today. But there was one in the crowd that wasn't going to settle for just a glimpse of Jesus. There was one in that gathering that day that decided, I'm going to go get what Jesus has provided. And she pressed through the crowd like it says in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12. Paul said, I press in to take hold of that for which Christ has taken hold of me. You know that Christ has taken hold of you, but now I want you to reach out and take hold of what Jesus brought you. Don't just be a bystander in the message of healing today, but I want everybody in here to not settle for the glimpse, to not compromise for a life filled with pain. You might be able to survive. She could have survived with this. She could have lived the rest of her life with this bleeding. It doesn't say she was dying from it. And so often I think that we compromise and say, well, I can live with this. I've got some treatment. I've got some pills. It's going to be okay. But today the healer is here. Don't settle for the glimpse. I wonder if there's just one person in this sanctuary today that says, I'm not going to settle for a glimpse. I'm fighting my way in to take hold of my healer because I'm getting my healing today. Today is the day I'm walking out healed that you might
touch the Savior and receive it and be forever free of your sickness and your disease. Press in right now because the healer is here. Don't forget to give us thumbs up. Thumbs up. Like, there we go. That's a thumb. <laughs> we got a thumb battle. My Lord. That's, <laughs> that's like my arm. <laughs> no, we do. Next show, we're going to do a thumb war. Me and we're doing O'Brien doing a thumb war on the next show. <laughs> Anyway, uh, have a just don't forget to be in church this weekend, yes. right? They can't forget about the importance of getting energized in God's house once a week. We'll see you next time. Be blessed.